thank you very much for uh, joining me for this exciting announcement uh, uh, this afternoon. I'm delighted uh, that Eddie is here. As you can see, our sign linguist from the Arkansas School of the Deaf, uh, and I appreciate your uh, support today and attendance here. Uh, I'm also glad to be joined by uh, Dr. Houston Davis, president of the University of Central Arkansas, uh, by Director Courtney Pledger, uh, director of Arkansas Educational Television, as well as uh, Stephen Addison, the dean of the College of Science and Mathematics at UCA. As you all know, I'm very proud uh, and talk a lot about the success of our computer science initiative here uh, in Arkansas. Uh, we started out with a simple mandate, encouraging students to uh, take computer science courses, putting $5 million into it each biennium, retraining teachers, and as a result, we have soared as a state to be one of the leaders in the nation, if not the top, in computer science education. In fact, we are the top uh, in leading in computer science education across the country. I want to express my thanks to the legislators that are here that have supported this initiative, as well as uh, Anthony Owen, I see here, Director of Computer Science in the Department of Education. Uh, we have uh, uh, our commissioner, Johnny Key, and uh, Maria Markham uh, uh, was be recognized as well, our Director of Higher Education. All have been supportive of this initiative. Uh, the logical next step uh, to complement, to supplement, and to continue the leadership role of our Computer Science Initiative is today's announcement, and that is to create the first of its kind cyber range here in Arkansas that will be located at the University of Central Arkansas campus. This cyber range is unique and first of its kind because it will be dedicated to the education of students, uh, both secondary and post-secondary students. It is unique also because it is a dedicated system for this purpose. And to show you how unique and how you just don't find cyber ranges everywhere, uh, we tried to do our research and Texas A&M has a good cyber uh, security program, but they utilize the cyber range at the University of Michigan. If you go over to Georgia, Georgia has a cyber range, but it's really a dedicated facility more working with NSA on national threats versus an educational tool. Florida is looking at this, but Arkansas is clearly in the front. Uh, we're leading. Uh, we're on the cutting edge of technology and putting it in use in the classroom for the benefit of our students, computer science, technology, and now cybersecurity. This is important because the threat from cyber crime, cyber warfare, and other cyber threats is very real. It has the focus of our national government. It has the focus of industry. It is a threat to our country, but it is a threat to every industry group, which means that every business is looking for those that are coming out of college, coming. Uh, out of their skill training that have not only a computer science background, but perhaps even a specialty in cyber threats. They have to protect their system. So it's not just all a governmental responsibility, but it is industry as well. And so the threat is very real. And that leads me to the announcement today, and that is a grant of $500,000 from the Department of Higher Education to the University of Central Arkansas for a cyber range that will be dedicated on that campus for the use of education of students, for the use in academia, and uh, to build the next generation of uh, cyber warriors, if you will, for the benefit of, of our state and nation. A cyber range is something that you gotta get your mind around, first of all. Uh, I come from Homeland Security and law enforcement, and we utilize ranges to practice defense and law enforcement techniques. Well, a cyber range is in the same way, is a dedicated computer system that can simulate a computer network under attack. And so it prepares the students in real time in a real system as the threats that they would face. And so this other unique part of uh, this announcement is that it's gonna be a cyber range located at the great campus at UCA 
but there's going to be a partnership with the Arkansas Educational Television Network. And immediately prior to coming out here today, uh, both uh, Dr. Davis and Courtney Pletcher signed a memorandum of understanding uh, where they're going to utilize the capability at UCA in the cyber range with the educational and broadcast capability of AETN so that if you're in West Memphis uh, and you are uh, learning about cyber threats, you could actually reserve some time on the cyber range. Uh, or you can log on to a curriculum that will be broadcast by AETN. And so this is exciting to me, and I want you to know you've, you've now exhausted my knowledge of this topic. <laughs> but I talked a long time on it. <laughs> but uh, there's, there are more experts that are in this room, and I think they will share about uh, what this will mean for our future. And so with that, I want to welcome the podium, uh, Dr. Houston Davis, President of UCA. Thank you, Governor, and thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate the interest in this very exciting announcement. Uh, I first of all uh, want to thank Governor Hutchinson for his leadership, his vision. Uh, he's made computer science, information technology, bolstering what we can do and know of information assurance, a centerpiece um, of his work, uh, making things such as coding uh, and understanding the importance of that from a K-12 and a higher education curriculum as well as services standpoint, uh, front and center uh, in terms of the priorities for the state of Arkansas. Uh, we are very blessed uh, to have Governor taking lead on those things that really position us to be cutting edge as a state, uh, not only in the U.S. but internationally. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, there's virt virtually no uh, sector of the economy that's not impacted by information technology and information assurance. Uh, you uh, would be hard pressed to find an occupational group, uh, and I would say just about everybody that's represented here in this room today knows uh, that some basic competencies in terms of information assurance and what can we do to be both proactive and reactive uh, in those settings is something that's affecting our daily jobs. And just as computer competencies uh, were very much a part of the general education curriculum back in the 80s and 90s as we look to the future, we see some level of cyber uh, and some level of information assurance being general education outcomes that are going to uh, be involved in higher education broadly. Um, UCA is absolutely committed uh, to exploring how cybersecurity and information assurance impact all fields of study. Uh, this is something uh, that is not just about one discipline. As we are meeting uh, with our, our board and as we, we meet with our leadership team, and I'd like to acknowledge Ms. Sheila Vaught and Ms. Elizabeth Ferris that are here from our board, Ms. Ferris, our chair, uh, we want to make certain that this is something that is computer science, it's business analytics, it's the basic sciences, it's health sciences, it's the geopolitical, and it's the ethical. All of those disciplines coming together to really think about how we're positioning this asset to benefit our broad student body. But I'm really excited about the fact that this positions UCA, along with our other higher education peers in the state, along with AETN, in building a bridge to K-12 and to the general public, to creating an asset that truly is um, at the service and educational purposes of the entire state. Um, as we begin working on the partnership with AETN on educational resources, professional development resources, we know that this will aid greatly as we think about how can this impact the learning and learning outcomes as students are moving through our K-12 system and into the uh, higher education settings to pursue their uh, goals and their careers. Uh, we're very excited about this. This is going to allow us to do things that there's no way that we could have done without the generosity uh, of the state stepping forward to make the range possible. Very excited about business and industry that have come forward to help us with this. Uh, I certainly would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Mr. Brad Hageman, who's here in the room, who's led a group locally that is going to be uh, helping with some operational resources. And we have a number of legislators from the very beginning that have been central to this and have constantly helped us to think broadly. And here in the room, I know uh, we've got uh, Representative David Meeks, Representative Stephen Meeks, appreciate their support, uh, Representative Rick Beck, Representative Steve uh, Maggie, 
And uh, Senator Jason Rayford couldn't be here today, but he's been in constant dialogue with us as we begin visioning and dreaming about what we might do here. This is an asset for the state of Arkansas, and UCA is proud uh, to stand at the forefront of this work. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Stephen Addison, who's the Dean of College of Science and Mathematics, uh, to step forward and talk a little bit about what the range is going to do for us. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the governor and our legislators for the great support in the, uh, this initiative. This is a significant milestone in our efforts to make UCA and Arkansas a center for cybersecurity. This is the day we set uh, uh, the steps in motion to bring a cyber range to UCA. So the questions are, what's a cyber range and what will we do with it? Cyber ranges were first widely used uh, to develop cybersecurity at military bases. And that's the origin of the name, artillery practice on a gunnery range. You improve your golf game on a driving range and you develop uh, your cyber skills on a cyber range. So what is exactly a range? At the simplest level, it's a couple of racks of computers. More importantly though, it's the transformational tool for people who want to learn cybersecurity. Uh, just uh, like uh, the uh, telescope uh, transformed astronomy, uh, microscopes transformed uh, biology, the range is the tool uh, that can transform cybersecurity education. It is that important and uh, it's great uh, to be on uh, the leading edge. So in a, in a traditional cybersecurity degree program, what you can do is you have an isolated laboratory and you can learn to attack and defend that laboratory. But that doesn't provide the sorts of experiences that you're going to get in the real world. Uh, what a cyber range can do is it can simulate any system that we want. It, it can act as a complete network. It, you can, you uh, will be on the range and uh, you can generate uh, inf uh, internet traffic and uh, that traffic will be just the same as if you were on the, the network that you're emulating. But on this network you can run attack and defense scenarios and uh, you can run scenarios that, that increase in sophistication as your skill uh, develops. And the great thing is you, once you've mastered uh, defending one network, you can switch to a completely different sort of network. So we'll be able to train uh, uh, students to defend all sorts of computer networks and certainly all of the ones that they would see in use in the industries around uh, the state. And also, uh, at the end of the day, we can reset the system back to its initial state uh, nothing gets damaged, uh, and uh, so we have uh, an isolated system, but one which can simulate, if we want, most of the entire internet. Uh, so uh, that's uh, a capability that few programs have, and that's what makes this special. Cyber range will also be use, uh, in use by all students uh, in our computer science program, our management information systems and it'll play an integral role in the cyber security degree program that's currently moving uh, through our approval processes. We recognize that the range is an asset for the entire state. We've, we've ne negotiated many articulation agreements uh, with uh, computer science and information science programs and we anticipate that we'll ne negotiate additional agreements uh, to uh, use the range. We're also though going to extend those efforts uh, to the K-12 arena. The last several years, we've actually been developing cyber education uh, tools uh, for school-age students at UCA. Uh, those efforts have uh, been uh, uh, tested in summer camps. Uh, some of the people who worked on that are in the room today. Uh, and those efforts uh, were in association with the Cyber Innovation Center and uh, with Louisiana Tech. The range will allow us to expand those efforts and to broaden the collaboration. Uh, and uh, the collaboration with AETN will allow us uh, to distribute those uh, sorts of experiences across the state. And uh, one of the things that we've found to be particularly effective is to use game-based learning. Uh, and so uh, much, much of the learning is done through scenarios. Up to date though, those scenarios have been largely on paper. Uh, now we'll be able to use real world scenarios with those students and instead of giving them printouts of traffic, they'll gain real experience at what it would be like to be defending uh, a, a network. 
so our cyber uh, security efforts are going to have broad ranging uh, impact. There are currently many, many jobs open in the state in cyber security, uh, but, uh, but the other thing to notice is it's not just the new jobs that we create, it's the jobs that we'll preserve because if a small business undergoes a cyber attack, the likelihood is that business uh, it ceases to exist because they can't afford uh, the losses. So training uh, cyber defenders won't only create the new direct jobs, but it'll also help uh, preserve existing jobs. And that, that again is of great importance to our, our, our economy. So that's where we stand today. I'll end by thanking everybody who's been involved uh, by the project. And as I look around the room, many, many of you have been involved in this project. And I look forward to working with you, uh, working with the governor, the governor's staff, of legislators, and with ATN in the future. Thanks. Thank you and delighted to have uh, Director Pledger here from AETN. Thank you, uh, AETN, uh, Arkansas PBS, and our only statewide public media is thrilled to partner with UCA on cybersecurity training for K through 12 uh, and higher ed, and, and really, in some ways, all the way up to uh, lifelong learners. Um, I want to particularly thank UCA and, and uh, President Davis and Dr. Addison and their teams for being uh, creative enough and having, having the strong initiative to, to bring something like a cyber range to Arkansas. It's, it's going to be truly unique. Uh, and I want to thank Governor Hutchinson for his continued forward-facing, future-looking viewpoint for all of our students. It's going to make a huge difference in Arkansas's future. Um, our education team, led by Division Director Brian Fields, uh, will continue AETN's strong commitment to computer science education with this initiative. Uh, we are just so glad to be able to bring our considerable experience in online education uh, to this, and uh, it's, it's kind of a natural progression of, of what, some of the things that we have been doing. We are currently offering 150 professional development courses in computer science to Arkansas teachers, and overall, our um, AETN Arkansas Ideas online portal, in partnership with the uh, Arkansas Department of Education, serves uh, over 44,000 K through 12 Arkansas educators who have completed 2.5 million hours through 650 professional development courses. Um, this is really an opportunity for us to lend our media skills and our experience uh, to this cybersecurity curriculum. And, and our job in this, I think, is to find the most compelling ways to frame and present this uh, future-facing, ground-breaking curriculum in ways that will, will draw students in, make them instantly interested in it, and, and then to disseminate this, uh, these materials uh, statewide to K through 12 and higher education students. Um, AETN is just extremely, extremely proud to serve the future of, of Arkansas's kids and uh, all students from uh, K through 12 and, and up through higher ed with this initiative. We're glad to be involved. Thank you. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions. This was uh, discretionary funds uh, that I uh, uh, had approval to send to the Department of Higher Education uh, for this purpose, uh, and uh, we 
have been working the last couple of months on this project, but it's discretionary funds from the last fiscal year that are being applied to this project. In terms of the uh, overall cost, uh, the 500000 is for the building of the cyber range. Uh, that will have to be uh, bid out under our procurement process. Uh, that will probably take, uh, uh, you know, 60 days or more. Uh, and then the cyber range has to be constructed. Uh, and uh, then I was pleased that uh, the dean was hoping that next January it would be functional and operational. We'll see if we can meet that timeline. Um, uh, in terms of other costs, I appreciate that's uh, UCA's contributing obviously to faculty time, uh, to professional development time. Uh, this grant is for the construction of the cyber range should, which should cover that. Now, help me out if I you need to correct on any of that. So you're not talking, cyber range doesn't cost a couple million dollars? Now the cost of the range is the 500000 and the and the governor was, was correct in that. And then we have uh, additionally um, had uh, companies in the Conway area. We've had uh, some financial institutions, uh, uh, s s several others uh, that are in the uh, computer science information technology space uh, that have pledged uh, support on operations. Um, as well to support uh, the work and the outreach. So this really is a great example of being able to leverage, as you put it, a scarce state's dollar with us being able to leverage the faculty that are in place um, at UCA, private sector continuing to come forward with some operational money, and then being able to leverage the network that AE10 has. Um, I think that that, that dollar is going to be multiplied many times over. Well, the capacity is the uh, big question, how to manage the capacity, because you have an online system uh, that uh, can be scheduled, and so uh, I would uh, uh, anticipate that UCA and AETN will work through those issues. Uh, the first uh, target is uh, the students of this state. I think about, I know West Memphis, El Dorado have, uh, have schools that are forward leaning in cybersecurity education, but as the Dean pointed out, you know, right now they're looking at paper printouts. This allows them to go online, so they would be scheduling it, their access to it, that would be managed by UCA and AETN. Uh, it would also be, uh, you know, utilized as a teaching tool that can, curriculum can be developed uh, and broadcast through AETN as professional development for teachers and computer, computer science educators. And so there's a lot of different aspects to it as to how far that extends. Uh, I mean, you can envision uh, a sister uh, higher education institution that might want to schedule some time uh, for their unique capability or research function or, or some other purpose. And so that has to be managed. Uh, there, what's wonderful about the online system is that there's great capacity. Let's see how far we can stretch that in Arkansas and manage that. These are th this is new. It's a first of its kind. We'll have to work through some of those details. Can you follow up to Mike's question? There obviously is going to have to be some more funding that's going to have to come up with this once it's uh, you know, this gets it started with the building of the cyber range. Uh, UCA, I'm delighted, has got uh, some great industry partners that are supporting the operational side of it. So I think in terms of investment, it's a question of what is the next, you know, if there's more potential, if this uh, hits a home run and there's greater demand than is anticipated with our educational partners, then there might require additional investment, but this is, uh, uh, we, ha we have to wait and see. This is a uh, project that is fully funded for its development uh, for the uh, uh, joint enterprise of, of education of our high school and our secondary students, and, and I believe it will meet that. We'll see where it goes from there. Yes, ma'am. This question might be more for uh, NASA, yep. but um, 
it says that the cyber range is really going to help support the cybersecurity degree program that you're yes. all hoping to bring. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about that and how popular that type of degree program is and having that UCA what that might bring? So absolutely. Cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing fields. Uh, if you, th there's a website called cyberseek.org uh, that the Department of Commerce runs uh, that highlights how many open jobs there are. And if you were to go on there today, you'd see that there's almost a thousand open jobs in information security in the state. About 400 of them are in the Conway, Little Rock, North Little Rock area. Uh, there's actually about 12,000 in Dallas. Uh, and uh, I think when I look today, somewhere in the range of 800,000 open jobs uh, across the country. If you look at all of the programs uh, that are have been put together uh, to develop uh, cybersecurity specialists, uh, they would be working for years just to meet that demand. Uh, and uh, the uh, Homeland Security has estimated uh, that in, in, in the early 2020s there'll be more than a million unfillable jobs. Uh, so I would expect uh, this to grow and, and to grow rapidly, uh, and uh, the uh, the program uh, that we have de that we have developed is a, is an end to end cybersecurity program. Uh, some programs just add one or two classes, but we we've taken uh, the uh, the route that this is a now a comprehensive discipline. It deserves a, a standalone degree program, and it, the, the program will ground undergraduate students in all aspects of cybersecurity. And I'm just thinking, too, just about, I mean, the reason Equifax hack, you know, a few years ago we had the Yahoo uh, hack. I mean, is this degree and is this new program something that could potentially train people on how to prevent those types of things? So, ab absolutely. What we will do is we would have people working on a range, and it would just as would be as if they were sitting at, at, at wherever Equifax has uh, their operations, and uh, they would uh, be receiving traffic uh, across uh, the internet uh, in, in uh, the usual way. And, and what they will do is they will will uh, learn to detect hostile traffic, which is often hidden in in innocent packets of information. But that, but they'll be learning how to detect those cyber attacks and, and, and how to thwart them uh, and, and uh, exactly uh, they'll, they'll learn what tools are out there but we'll also be training them to, uh, to uh, anticipate new threats because one, one of the, the, the issues currently is most people use antivirus software but the problem is all that does is prevent known threats. Uh, and so one of the things that we want to do is, is to be able to have people who can anticipate unknown attack vectors, uh, and uh, so so part of a range actually is you can uh, l learn uh, ways uh, to uh, uh, to attack uh, computer systems before they actually happen, because be, because at the moment it's it's tough to do that because we'd have to practice on real systems uh, that are, are are in production. Well, that might uh, damage those systems. Uh, and certainly uh, could uh, could leak information. Uh, what the what the range does is it allows you to do those sorts of things, but not put any information actually at risk. Uh, so uh, so it, it enables us uh, for students, uh, members of the public, uh, whoever is using it, to, to to gain the full experience of actually being on a computer system under attack, but for there to be no damage after the attack. So. Do you have a ballpark, talking about operating budget, do you have a ballpark operating budget that you for this thing? So, so uh, the, the, ma the major uh, thing really, uh, in, in addition to, uh, you know, internet service and, and things like that, that, that is something that already comes uh, to our campus, uh, but probably the, the, the major Part would would be uh, annual uh, upgrades of software and and, and maintenance, uh, and uh, looking at what go, what goes into a system like that. That maintenance uh, cost is is going to be in the neighborhood of of twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about with that, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, announcement today and look forward to uh, seeing its success in the future. Thank you very much.